But yeah, that's good. That's good. Very nice posture. Yes. So I will transfer you my energy. I will transfer my karma. Here is my karma on you. Jason! You have a great aura. Yes. Jason! Encouragement! Yes! Whoa! Folks, if you have a business and you just get the feeling that something just isn't right, uh, maybe it's your marketing, maybe it's your sales, maybe it's your branding, maybe it's your it's your website, maybe it's your print pieces, maybe it's your accounting, maybe it's your performa, uh, maybe it's your your workflow, your systems, all your documentation, your checklists, your processes, maybe it's it's your online ads, maybe it's your conversion rate. If you have a feeling that your business is stuck and that something just isn't right with your business, you're going to love today's show. However, b before we get into the, the, the meat and potatoes and the uh, the actual focus point and the things we're going to talk about on today's show, I'm going to interview a guy in the office here at the Thrive Time Show, a man who you, you may speak to if, you, if, you, if you're looking to get tickets for one of our in-person events. And he's going to share with you how a casual conversation that he had with the man that he met at Walmart somehow turned into a conversation about, uh, Whoa. okay, Thrive Nation, certain things just are not right and so <laughs> <laughs> so james uh he's here in our office selling tickets and then all next thing you know he's saying hey i met this guy now don't don't mention i don't want to know about the race of the guy i don't know his nationality i don't know what state he's from i just want to know in general terms you're telling me where did you meet this guy oh uh, well i don't want to name the state okay <laughs> but what kind of place did you meet him at uh you know what it was at walmart okay so you met a guy at walmart yeah, and, and then he tells you what he. Well, we just started talking about whatever, and he's like, "Yeah, so like in my culture, what time out? So you met a guy at Walmart, and you just start talking. He just starts talking. Are you in line? <laughs> yeah, like you, I'm li in line. Are you? I'm, in are you I'm, in I'm in line. I'm wearing my. You're in line. You're in line. Okay, at Walmart. Yeah, I'm okay. wearing my. How long ago was this? This is like three years ago. <laughs> so you're in line wearing your 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 hat, and this guy says, "What do you?" We just start talking about culture and blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, in my culture, like, you know, my dad's brother also slept with my mom. So, so my blood. <laughs> wait, 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 your dad's, say it again here. He's like, so my dad's brother okay. slept with my mother. And now my brother, his dad is also my uncle, but he's also <laughs> my brother. <laughs> what? <laughs> How does that get brought up? It just, how does that happen? We're, but how and, does that get brought up? Dude, it just went, you know, real crazy. You're real in fast. line with a guy at Walmart <laughs> and he just says, hey, by the way, how does that happen? I, you, you uh, dude, it's such a crazy I know story. You, but I want to hear how does it go from, yeah, but I like your so hat. So we're, we're talking for like 10 minutes. You're 10 minutes. So a guy just like at Walmart. 10 minutes deep into conversation. Okay, yep. Yeah. And then, you know, he gets a call. He's like, excuse me, one second. It's my brother. It's my brother. You know, and then it's my brother. Yeah, it's my brother. And then I'm still in line. He's still in line. And then we just start talking about culture because we were, st we were talking culture. about different cultures. And then he's and like, yeah, in my culture, my. Yeah, repeat so it again, please. He's like, yeah. So in my culture, what we do is, you know what? Like we sleep with each other's wives if what? we're family. What? And I'm like, what, what? is going what? on? What? So he's like, yeah. So my brother, his what? father is also my uncle, but it's also my brother. Well, come on. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, oh, <laughs> it is culture. <laughs> it is what? sick. What unbelievable! <laughs> this is a real story. It is. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'll tell you this, folks. Just when you told me that story, I immediately thought <clears throat> something about that story is just not right. <laughs> so, and I'm telling you, if you're listening right now and you say something's just not right with your business, come out to one of our in-person workshops, <laughs> and you can meet James. <laughs> And James can share with you his bass awkward story about <laughs> inbreds that, <laughs> that he met at Walmart. Why did you? How do you leave the conversation? Are you like, well, it's thanks time for to sharing. Check out. To me, that's analogous to somebody you just met. Okay, you're at Walmart, and you go, yeah, nice hat. Pleasure to meet you. How are you? I'm doing, doing fine. Yeah. Can you check to see if I have monkey pox? <laughs> I just think it's that level of, of it's like, can you, can you look at this rash? It's okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I don't know, give myself a swirly. That was incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks, Clay. Yep. Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show. But this show does. Two men. 
eight kids co-created by two different women. 13 multi-million dollar businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thrive Time Show. <laughs> Nation, welcome back onto the Thrive Time Show on your radio and podcast download. For those of you who have helped us to reach number two on the iTunes charts, a very special thank you for you. And Z, as a gift, I don't know if it's proper to give a guest as a gift. Well, without their permission. Well, I think sometimes it is. he answered the phone. Show, he answered it. Here's the deal. <laughs> I was listening to Dave Ramsey years ago. I love mm-hmm. listening to Dave Ramsey. I love reading his stuff. And he had this guest on the show by the name of Thomas C. Corley. Now, see, you've having a, you've been having a hard time pronouncing his name. You, yeah, you think it was, it's Corleone? Is that what you th- thought it was? It was I think he probably was born that way, and you just changed it because you know connotation. I mean, connotation. And, you know, people thought. I mean, he's in financial. But this guy is a, a very know, successful author. <laughs> Uh, he is a guy who's run an accounting practice, and he has distilled this thing called the habits of the rich. If you've never checked out Thomas C. Corley, check him out today online at C O R L E Y. Thomas Corley, his book, The Habits of the Rich, is an incredible book filled with intense research about what makes people successful and what makes people stay perpetually stuck. Mr. Tom Corley, welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Clay. Hello, Dr. Z. Hey, you know, I just figured since you were from New York and that name, you probably changed it. Z, just forget about it. Forget about it. (laughs) Take, take hey, the- listen, I used to shovel uh, m- um, Mr. Castellano's driveway. I'm not kidding. For <laughs> oh, about wow. three years. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, I l- thought he was a Wall Street broker. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let, me try, see, let me try this again here. Let me try this again here. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome on to the show. <laughs> on today's show, we're going to introduce to you Thomas C. Corleone. <laughs> and we're going to make you a deal. You can't refuse. you got to listen to the show. You either implement the habits of the rich you or be he'll rich. get out a lead pipe. We want to be poor. We're going to make you a you know, deal you can't forget. Consider you this a favor. You, you don't can't wear concrete no. shoes. No, you don't. No. One day I may ask for one in return. All right, so, Tom, your book, Rich Habits, the daily success habits of wealthy individuals. When I read the book, it blew my mind, but it's based off of your actual interviews with 233 rich people and 128 poor people. Tell us about when you were first inspired to write this book. So here's what happened. I um, had a small business client. I had just taken over the helm of my CPA from a small business client uh, had uh, demanded to meet with me almost within, I guess, two months of my taking over. So I met with him uh, at night, and um, he was kind of a big, burly guy, intimidating. Uh, but he um, he came into the office and said, I've, I need you to get me a line of credit by this Friday. Uh, and I, he sat down, uh, and I, I said, there's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to do that. It might take me months to get you a line of credit. And uh, the guy almost immediately broke down and started crying because he his bank had shut down his line of credit. They mm. termed it, and uh, he had payroll that Friday, and he wasn't going to make payroll, and he didn't, uh, and he ended up going bankrupt. But uh, what he sat there and he said, "Look, I, what am I doing wrong? What is it that your successful clients are doing that I'm not doing?" And uh, I started trying to research it on the internet. I couldn't find anything other than the millionaire next door, but that didn't really help us. So uh, I started doing my own research, and it evolved into a what became a five-year rich habits study. And what you have discovered is that you know you might not be able to change your results today, but rich people change their habits. Rich people have changed their habits, and then when you do those habits over time, that allows people to earn real. Wealth and these habits are things you know you can immediately implement. I mean, maybe you can't immediately become successful, but you can immediately implement these habits. And so, what I want to do is spend a lot of time breaking down the research and the habits that you found. And, and I've heard you say that forty percent of the actions that we take during the day are habitual. Is is is, is that correct, Tom? You're saying forty percent of the actions that most people take during the day are habitual. 
Yeah, and it's not just me saying it. It's actually a, uh, a 2006 uh, Duke study that they had on habits, and they found that 40 to 45 percent of all of your daily behaviors are habits, and habits are subconscious uh, things, are subconscious behaviors, thinking, emotions, decisions. So, if you're um, you got good habits, Clay and Dr. Z, uh, you're on autopilot for success. If you've got bad bad habits, you're you're in a bit of trouble. And you have in your book so many what I would call in the show we call them knowledge bombs. But it's something that's so powerful that uh, you almost have to duct tape your head back together after you read it. And you have so many knowledge bombs, but I want to have you break down 10 of them that, that I thought were very, very powerful. And I'm certainly, I don't have time uh, to get through all of them. Maybe on a future show we could have you on again because your book is so powerful. Uh, one is Living Below Your Means. You study that wealthy people, you, you observe that wealthy people spend no more than 25% of their income on housing. Wealthy people spend no more than 15% of their income on food. But that's not normal for most people. Talk to me about living below our means. Yeah, so this is, these are the habits that you primarily pick up from your parents. Uh, you, most of our habits we pick up from parents or, or some mentor or influencer in our life. But uh, you pick these habits up in early childhood. And th- what I found with the poor people in my study is they're so used to spending 100% of their income. I mean, it becomes a habit. So if they make, if they have a, a year or two years, or if so, they get a promotion or a new job and their income doubles, guess what happens? They spend a hundred percent of their income. Right. They never save. So the idea is to to get into some type of savings regimen, some habit of saving, even if it's just five percent uh, a pay, pay a paycheck. You've got to try and forge that habit because that then when you make more money, you can. Uh, contribute more. You can increase the 10%, 15%. But, you know, if you don't save, you can't invest. And when opportunities pop, pop up and you have no money to take advantage of them, somebody else does and they become uh, successful down the road and you scratch your head. And how many people have said, oh, you know, I could have bought that house uh, if I only invested in that business? Uh, you know, everybody what? has these stories and they they don't do it because they don't have the money, and they don't have the money because they don't get into the habit of saving. One example in your book you talk about is that 94% of people live below their means by buying a vehicle, and a used vehicle, as opposed to leasing. So I'm going to pick on uh, Dr. Zellner and myself. I drive an H2 Hummer uh, that gets... Uh, and Tom, if I'm really adding all the fuel additives, and I'm really Z coming to like a slow stop, I get about 7 to 8 miles per gallon. Which we know you're not doing, so yeah. And that <laughs> that vehicle four miles is is paid for though. The vehicle's paid for, right? And I look at it as I got about 15 miles to work, 15 miles back. So, bottom line, if I can't afford six dollars to get to work and six dollars to get back, I got bigger life issues than than the Hummer uh, getting nine to eight eight miles a gallon. But the vehicle's paid for. I bought it used. And it's been paid for. I don't feel the need to constantly lease the newest make and model. Z, you drive a Porsche uh, today. Did you show up in the Porsche today? Did you drive the Porsche I did, today? I, uh, yeah. It's, what a 2000, it's a 2010 911. And now you own an auto auction, so it's kind of not even a fair discussion. But you own an auto auction. So, Tom, he could probably, he, has a th- he sells 1,000 cars every Friday. So he could probably buy any car he wants. But it's a nice vehicle. But why do you not, Z, always get the 2018 brand new, the 2019 brand new? Why do you always not upgrading, upgrading, upgrading? It's a very nice car, but why are you not one of these people that's always leasing the newest make and model? Well, just like what Tom was saying, I mean, I think that's a habit of of people that are successful, and that is living below your means. And for me, I always drive out a car. I buy a car uh, used typically, um, you know, you recently used. And because, uh, you know, you buy one new, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's, so guess what, it's used. Yep. And so, um, <laughs> you know, um, and then I drive it out. I drive it for many, many years. The, the car I had before this was a really fun car. It was a BMW, and I drove it for 11, 12 years. And then it finally was like, okay, it's costing more to maintain it mm. than I could go get another car. And so, so you've seen you know. Oprah's car. You saw Oprah, one of Oprah's vehicles. I think, I think a Bentley come yeah. through your auto auction. Yeah, exactly. And is it amazing to you how much less money... The person who repurchases Oprah's Bentley is going to pay than maybe when the car was originally purchased? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a wholesale value of cars and, and, and the way they go down in value. And it's one investment. It's a large investment for most people. But it's one investment that almost always goes down in investment. You know, homes homes in some parts of the country go up more than others. But homes typically go up, you know, in value. 
Tom, I want to get your take on this. Do not habitually gamble. You notice that yes, 77% right. of poor people play the lottery consistently. This is what they do. 77%. That's a huge number. Yeah, so here, here's the deal with that. So poor people, uh, they believe that, you know, because they're raised in poverty, that uh, they can't break free. They have these limiting negative beliefs that basically uh, once, if you're born poor, you're going to stay poor. And the only way, the only great equalizer in their mind is playing the lottery because they don't think that they're going to be able to work their way out of poverty. They don't think they're going to have any of that good luck and success that, you know, by starting a business. So they look at the lottery as the great equalizer. And uh, I had one individual in my study who owned uh, a couple businesses, and he said it made him sick every Friday when he would pay his, uh, the people who were working in one of his businesses They'd run right, almost all of them would run right to the deli or to, to get some lottery tickets. They'd spend about 20% of their income, you know, within yes. five minutes on oh, lottery tickets. And I'll tell you that. I, I went, one time I went to a, a, I used to own a company called DJConnection.com, Tom. We were one of the nation's largest entertainment companies for weddings. And uh, one of my employees, his car didn't work, and he said, could I ride with you down to, the, down to the trade show at the Dallas Market Hall in Dallas, Texas? And so Z, I thought, okay, sure. So we stop at the first gas station. Now, this guy's making about 70000 a year, upper 60s, lower 70s. We stop, and I go to the bathroom. Now, Tom, this is one of these places where they have, like, a place you can shower, a place you can buy a Subway sandwich, and a place you can buy gas, all in one multiplex. It's called Tom, American you, Truck Stop. Tom, you, you know what I'm talking about? You have those kind of beautiful yeah, things? Yeah, we, we have them in New Jersey. We have the same thing. Okay, so I pull in. I go to the restroom. I come back. I notice the guy has purchased a lot of lottery tickets. And just kind of, you know, casual. I said, hey, how many? How much money did you spend there? He goes, oh, like 60 bucks. But, you know. But it's how much am I going to win? Now, buddy? we go to the next gas station on the way back home, and another 60 bucks. And I, I asked him, I said, hey, typically when you go into the great state of Texas and you have the ability to buy lottery tickets, so this is before the Oklahoma lottery was a thing, do you buy tickets every time you stop for gas? And he goes, yeah, I mean, I look at I kind of cap it at 60 bucks every time. I'm like, so every time you fill up a car with gas, when you DJ in Dallas, which is every other weekend, you spend 60 bucks. He goes, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, 60 is my limit. I mean, that's my limit. Now, see, if somebody's making... 65000 a year, and they're spending $60 every time they fill up with gas, which is half the time they fill up with gas. In your mind, is that over the limit? Is that okay? Is that too much? What do you think? You know, I just want to take that young man right now and just throat punch him. Just, <laughs> and say, stop it. <laughs> throat stop, punching. Stop, stop, stop the idiocracy because it, it's, a, it's a, you know what it is? It's a poor man's tax. It's a it volunteer is. tax. Oh. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, the odds of you winning are, I mean, you're more likely to be bitten by a shark while you're in <laughs> Iowa. I mean, come on. It's, while it's struck crazy, by crazy. lightning. While struck by lightning, riding a tornado. No, Tom, tornado. we're yeah. going fast for these final seven here, okay? Read every day. Uh, you, you study wealthy people. The statistics show that 58% of, of wealthy people read biographies or autobiographies of, six, of successful people. 79% of wealthy people choose to read educational, career-related Material, but just eleven percent of wealthy people are reading for entertainment purposes only, and uh, poor people almost never read at all unless it's merely for pleasure. Can you talk to me about the absolutely? Uh, it's, it's a huge disparity between wealthy people reading and poor people reading. Yeah. So th th what what's going on here really is they. Um, I, I perfect example is um, one one of the uh, questions I asked in my. Uh, and out of the 144 questions is, what do you do at the end of the day when you're done uh, with your, your regular job? What, what do you do uh, and uh, when you get home? So uh, the, the rich people answered, oh, I'm, I'm on this you know, board of directors. I'm coaching this team. I uh, teach at night. I'm, I do speaking engagements. They had 100 different things that they did at night. Poor people said, oh, I'm so tired from working. You know, I had a hard, hard long, hard day. Uh, so I eat dinner. Maybe I have a glass of wine or a beer. I uh, sit down and um, I'm, you know, because I'm tired. I watch TV to kind of, you know, relax and and you know, that. So they're wasting their time. Is my point. They have they have a routine in which they waste their time. So reading isn't part of their routine. TV is a big part of their routine. Uh, so they're just not doing 
the things that you need to be doing. They don't have the habits like reading to educate yourself, to gain knowledge, uh, to learn a little bit more. You know, that the rich people the, or the people who are pursuing wealth or pursuing success, they have the routine of reading every day. They read on average between 30 minutes to 60 minutes every day. It's typically about their career or their industry, um, and the poor people don't. I have not yet to publish a book um, like yours, um, but I have personally coached uh, Chup with nearly a thousand business coaching clients, uh, you know, over the years. Right. And I'm 37. I've been doing this for 12 years. And one thing I've discovered is that poor people tend to mindlessly watch TV, Tom. They tend to mindlessly surf the internet, Tom, and they tend to mindlessly play video games. And I talked to a guy. This is about six months ago. Uh, Z, he's in his late 40s. And the guy tells me, he said, I did not, now this is, this is a guy who has a business, I won't give any of the information so no one can guess who he is, okay, it's been about six months ago. See, this is a guy whose business is stuck at about three hundred dollars to $400,000 a year of gross revenue. He can barely pay himself $70,000 a year, $80,000 a year. And he said, the reason why he could not call his leads is he said, I'm just so tired and I was playing this video game and I was trying to go to that next level and I just, I was right at the, and Z, if you're a 45 year old man and you 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 can't you can't, you're an entrepreneur you can't just be spending two hours a night three hours a night four hours a night playing video games can you? Oh, you can. Oh, you can. Wow. But you know, through all of our actions, we have consequences. This Justin. And and I love it that that uh, Tom has called them out as habits. In other words, these are things that you should just be doing automatic. And at first, you know, in order for a habit, uh, Tom, you've probably done a lot of research on this. If you do something what for two weeks. I mean, if you're continuously like, okay, I'm not going to do this, or I'm going to do this, and two weeks pass, then you can kind of start to make it more of a habit. Is it a month, Tom? How long do we need to do what, this? What is that, to make what is that time habit? frame? You probably researched yeah. that, Tom. So, so according to my research, it's about 90 days. 90 days. Oh, uh, 90, 90 days. days. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. So there, there's was a great uh, study on this that where uh, they looked at um, uh, about a hundred people, and uh, it took an average of 18 to 254 days with 66 days being the average to forge a habit. Uh, that was uh, Philippa Lally from the University College of London. So she, so she, she was really one of these trailblazers on, these ha on trying to understand how habits are forged. But what I found in my research is it takes about 30 days for uh, the neural infrastructure, that's the neurons that are talking to each other to create a synapse. It takes another 30 days for it to get the attention of the basal ganglia, which is the command and control center for habits. And then it takes uh, another 30 days for the basal ganglia to decide that that is a habit uh, and it marks it as a habit. And once the uh, basal ganglia marks a synapse as a habit, it stays a habit for life. This is an important thing. You never lose your habits because it's like building a house. Uh, you, you, the house is built. It doesn't go away. It's still there. Uh, and with habits, it's the same thing. The neural in infrastructure is there. The only way to really change a habit uh, is to forge either to forge a new habit or to take an existing habit and what I call habit stacking. You kind of uh, you know leverage that that synapse and you you stack another habit on top of it. Like uh, if you if you exercise on the stairmaster, I do I did this. I put a book up there. Uh, so I could read while I'm doing the Stairmaster. Well, guess what? That's habit stacking. Tom, uh, we had a listener who tried to call through during the, while you were talking, and Chup, uh, our call screener, was was he wanted to cut down. He said, this is a very rude caller. I cannot let this caller call in, but you did get an audio of what he had to say. Right, right. Uh, Eric Chup, this is one of the callers. He tried to call in while you were talking. This is what he said. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Dr. Z, one up me. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be basal ganglia. You be a neurosynapse, okay? Yeah. So, hey, uh, there are neurosynapse. Uh, yes. You've kind of started changing your ways a little bit there. Yes, I have, absolutely. But it's only been a week or two. Yes, so, uh, we, what direction are we going here? We're going gluten free all the time, baby. Well, okay, now we're three yeah. weeks into this thing, and I'm kind of starting to get a little, you know, you're start, I'm sure you're coming on my radar. I'm starting to kind of pay attention. I'm gluten-free all the time. And you I know what I'm saying? I exfoliate my skin. I eat kale all the time. 
with being a basal ganglion. I'm like, you know what? You're kind of getting on my radar now. And organic, you're kind of looking a little sexy there, or, Neurosynapse. Organic bison, that's what I do. No, I mean, no extra cob. That's what I want. I, you're I firing, extra cob. firing, firing. Now we're 30 days in. You know what? I no longer gamble. No, think, no, uh-huh. Mm, I think I'm ready okay. to go on a date with you. What? That, that, Let's go out. That's great because that's what I wanted. I mean, you know, steak and shrimp. Yeah, but that's, that's, but that's right. good for people to know. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm. These are things that are conscious efforts, and you have to be purposeful. And it takes, yeah, anywhere from a month to three months, right? Is that is that what I heard from you, Tom? Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's gonna. I mean, the thirty days gets the you know the the, the synapse in place, and then the, the other thirty days they kind of gets the attention of the basal ganglia, and then you know thirty thirty more so days. Ninety we got days, marriage. We ninety got, days is we got, a good number. Yeah, and then we got marriage. Now so I have days, a I have a hot I, I have I have five final hot questions for Tom. See if we can Come fit them in here. So here we oh, go. We can. I have it number. Have it number five. You want to bite your tongue and control your emotions. Only six percent of wealthies say what's on their mind. <sighs> wow, Tom, break that down. All right, so here's, here's the problem with emotions. Um, the emotions are primarily uh, directed by the amygdala. That's where fear, anger, all the negative emotions anyway. And um, there's a lot of studies and research on the fact there's a bro- broaden and build study that says, look, when you allow negative emotions to take over, yep. it shuts down your prefrontal cortex to some extent. Yes. Prefrontal cortex is the command and control center. That's how you make a logical decision. So imagine, you know, you're allowing your emotions to take over. Well, you're not making, you're not, you lose the ability to make good decisions. You're making poor choices. And uh, so th- this is all bad. You want to be able to work, you want your whole brain to be working, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you've got all these hurdles and these obstacles and these pitfalls. If you're losing your cool all the time, you're never going to be able to solve those problems. Tom, uh, I used to travel around as a business comedian back in the day after I sold DJ Connection uh, doing comedic business speeches. And one thing I told people about the amygdala is don't let an almond, an, an almond sized part of your, of your body control your whole body. I think a lot of people let the almond sized part of their mind control their entire body. See, you see this all the time. The amygdala, it's an almond-sized part of the mind, and people are letting it control their entire body. Which is unfortunate. And it's that's, sad. And, and that's a very good point, and I'm glad, you know, he, um, Tom's throwing out some pretty big words, but he's really talking about parts of the brain and what and what their purpose is. And, and to understand that gives you wisdom into how, how you operate. And so, if you are an emotional person and you let those emotions dictate, then you can't Use the frontal part, which is your, I love that, command and control center that really allows you to make those logical, good decisions, you know, without all the, well, they hurt my feelings kind of, kind of, feelings. kind of, uh, feelings. Nothing more but than feelings. feelings. This is good stuff. I'm loving this because, uh, Tom, I have a quick question for you as, we, oof, as we're going oof. into the, the final four here. Yeah, this is hot. Um, what was your threshold for someone being rich and what was your threshold for someone being poor? Because you said you interviewed 240 some odd rich and 100 and right. some odd poor. What was your cut? Off. What was your threshold? Yeah, so the wealthy was um, 3.2 million in uh, net liquid wealth. That's investable assets plus uh, 160 thousand or more in income. So it was a two-part test. And poor people were uh, 30 less than 35 thousand in net income and less than five thousand dollars basically in the bank. Well, wow, okay. So now I, I, my amygdala is calling for me to uh, reference point number six, which is the Ocho minus two. Develop the habit of doing more than paid for. Chubb, thank you for uh, uh, Eric Chubb. Our, 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 he's a, kind of our show observer here. He, he started to laugh just a little bit. So the, the develop the habit of doing more than paid for. Some people call this the, go- the golden rule. Poor people call it being a workaholic. Some people call this uh, the golden rule. Poor people call this, is this my job? Tom, talk to me about how wealthy people have developed the habit of doing more than paid for. It sounds very Napoleon Hill esque. Esque. Yeah. So, and, and there's a lot more to this onion. So, when you when I peeled this, I found out that there was a, there's uh, a lot of psychology going on with the wealthy people. What they would do is they would manage the expectations of whoever it was, their customers or their clients or their patients. So they would underpromise and overdeliver. Whereas the poor people would overpromise and then set themselves up for under delivering. So the, this, the smart wealthy people were, were teeing it up just perfectly. Uh, this is a, a a powerful concept and Tom I'm not trying to 
paint you into a corner to have you on the uh, iTunes number two podcast, but I would love to have you on again to talk more about this because this is so good. There's so much here. I wish I had more time with you. Uh, move number seven here. Habit number seven. Choose to set concrete and specific goals. Uh, uh, according to your research, 80% of wealthy people are focused on accomplishing one single goal every day. But only 12% of poor people are focused on accomplishing a goal. Break that down, my friend. Yeah, so the, again, this goes to, to the psyche. You know, poor people, uh, they have the negative limiting belief that they're never going to be able to break out of poverty. So why the hell should I, I you know, try and set goals or, or pursue dreams? The wealthy people in my study, because they had parents that pretty much raised them to, as success mentors, they were success mentors to the kids. They said, you can be anything, you could do anything. Right. And uh, so they had this belief system, hey, you know, I'm going to pursue dreams and I'm going to pursue goals. This is a powerful concept right there. You have the capacity and the tenacity to change your life. Z, did you, go, G, Z, did you grow up rich? No, I grew up poor, but I grew up with a mother that spoke that over us. And she said, listen, you guys, um, you're smart. You can do whatever you want to do. You're going to do it. And she just gave us unconditional love. She was very strict, but we grew up, you know, uh, very. Uh, but you and I both grew means, up in the means. same in the same environment. People say, "Well, did you know you're poor?" Yeah, because we were there. Oh yeah. Okay. So, move number eight. You want to get up earlier. Forty-four percent of wealthy people wake up three hours before work starts. Now, I also know very wealthy people that stay up three hours after people go to bed to work on their to-do list. But at the end of the day, Tom, talk to me about why waking up earlier has been proven to be statistically better for most entrepreneurs struggling to find the time to get things done. Yeah, so I use this strategy because I was running my CPA firm, my financial planning practice, and I decided, hey, I'm going to write a book. Uh, so the only time I had, because I had three kids and a wife and I didn't want to get divorced, was uh, I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning. So uh, 4.30 to 7 in the morning is when I did my writing. I just took a page out of the wealthy people, the self-made millionaires in my study, and, uh, and lo and behold, I've been using that routine ever since. I've, and since then, I've written five books and done a whole host of other things. So uh, that morning routine uh, has been paying off uh, like crazy for me. I, and I think that's why wealthy people do it because they know that's the first thing in the morning. They won't be interrupted. Nobody's up anyway. Uh, they can get a lot done and it's called uh, block time blocking. So they can focus their mind through this time blocking strategy and get things done. That's a move. That's a move. If you're struggling to find time to get things done, wake up earlier. The final move I want to talk to you about today, Mr. Tom Corley is getting a mentor getting a coach. Eric Schmidt, the most successful CEO, some would argue, of the modern generation, the former CEO of Google, said the most important advice he ever received was from John Doerr, the venture capitalist, who said, you need a coach. Bill Gates says everyone needs a coach. Uh, let's go with Steve Jobs said, you need to hire a coach. All these people hired a coach. It is so important that you have a coach or a mentor in your life. 93% of people, according to your research, 93% of wealthy people that had a mentor attributed their achievement and success in the world to their mentor. Tom, break it down. Yeah, so mentors I found in my research were the fast track uh, to accumulating an enormous amount of wealth because mentors tell you what to do and what not to do. They tell you what to read, what not to read. They tell you what skills to develop, what skills you don't need to develop. They basically... Um, t like a p pinpoint, uh, they identify exactly what you need to do in this large circle that you call your career. They said, now, just focus on this thing here, and you're going to be wildly successful. So they, they help you avoid making a lot of mistakes, wasting time, uh, and that saves you uh, time and money. Tom, if the listeners out there want to learn more about you or want to purchase a book, what's the best place you would direct them? Do you want to direct them to Amazon? Do you want them to go to your website? What's the best place? Because our listeners are voracious readers. They love to take action. They love to buy books. What's the best way they can learn more about Mr. Tom Corley and the things that you offer? Yeah, so they can get my book just about anywhere. Amazon's a good place to go. But uh, I also, my Rich Habits website is also a blog. 
and I have my tip of the morning to you, and it's based on I, – it's only my content, so I don't have any advertising or any of that crap on there. Uh, and I get that every day. Somebody asks me every day, can, can we advertise on your website? And I said, nope. And <clears throat> so you're going to get a tip of the morning to you. And sometimes I post blogs and I have my tip of the week, which is usually a video with my friend in Australia, who's the top real estate expert in Australia. So I got a lot of good content on there that's based on my research. Tom, uh, we like to end the show with a boom, which stands for Big Overwhelming Optimistic Momentum for our millions of listeners all around the world. So if it's okay, we're going to kind of time it out here. We're going to say three, two, one, and then, if Tom, if you're feeling it, if you, if you can give, kind of give us a boom. Are, Tom, are, are you okay with giving us a boom? I'll give you a big boom. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, are oh. you ready for a boom? Are you ready, are you ready for the boom? I'm always Chuck, ready. are you ready for the boom? Let's boom it. Here we go. Three, three two, two, one. Boom. Boom. Tom, I appreciate well you done. so much. This show is going to go out on, I believe, uh, Monday. And as soon as it goes out, we'll, we'll send you a link to it. And uh, right now we're number two on iTunes, and hopefully you get hundreds of thousands of downloads. And uh, I love your energy, man. I love your, I love your research. It was awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I really do. Hey, well, take well care. Well done, buddy. Well Have done. Have a great Thank day. You. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, Thrive Nation, on today's show, I want to give you an encouraging word. Uh, These are actual real people, real clients we've worked with. They're not holograms, and they've had real success. And I know we're living in a challenging economy and a challenging world, but I've worked with these guys for for years, and they really are diligent doers. And I just wanted to uh, celebrate their success and let you see that it is possible to achieve massive success in this crazy world. Dave and Trisha of Papa Gallo's The Morning Glory, welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you guys? Hey, good. How are you? Doing well. I'm fired up. So, Dave, I got to start with you. Um, how long ago was it when you first heard about us? How, how many years ago or what year was that, sir? 2017. 2017. A customer actually mentioned you guys and we looked into it. And uh, I remember our first call, I had to hide in the storeroom to get a half an hour to talk to you guys. So you, uh, we, you first heard about us six years ago. We've been working with you since that time. Um, Trisha, I know that you look at the numbers and so does Dave. Um, when you think about the growth of Papa Gallows from that first call to now, and then you started uh, morning glory since that time, what kind of growth have you guys seen? Oh God, we're at the Papa Gallo side. It's probably four times what it was when we met you guys. And then morning glory was, was an idea. So it's kind of hard to think about the percentage of growth because it wasn't a thing yet. So, uh, but that, that, that business is doing well too, right? Morning, morning glory. Yeah, surprisingly good. Sometimes it it upsets me how well it's doing so fast. But a lot of the things we're doing, we didn't do with Poppy Gallows because we didn't know, you know. And we got to implement some of the things we learned from you guys with the new place, and it's taken off a lot faster. Now, your business has a lot of things that you, a lot of variables, and I'm going to kind of march through them, and I'm going to see if you can teach our listeners about this here. So the first thing with Papa Gallows, the food has always been great. Morning Glory, the food has always been great. If people are in the Satellite Beach area, they need to check out the food. So I've never had, most restaurants I work with, I have to work with them on food quality. I've never had to work with you at all on food quality. However, the one area you guys were not getting reviews from your happy customers. People love the food. But you know, we weren't getting objective reviews, and people read those reviews. Can you talk to us, Dave, about the importance of – I know I harass you about it every week, but can you talk to the listeners out there, out there about the importance of gathering those objective uh, Google reviews and oftentimes video reviews as well? Oh, absolutely. I, I didn't think it would be that huge when we started it down that road, but – I, I, every week we get people that come in and go, oh, we drove 40 miles because we read the reviews about the place. And to be honest, if we go out of town, the first thing we do is look at the reviews as well. So, I mean, you don't think it's going to make that big a deal, but it's it's a game changer for sure. Now, Trisha, on the websites, we've worked to create the websites for both uh, Morning Glory and Papa Gallows. And, and I find a lot of business owners can get stuck infinitely doing small little minutia changes to their websites instead of building a website that ranks in Google. Um, we've worked with you guys on building both websites, and we do have to update the menu pricing from time to time and do some things. But how um, how much of a game changer has it been having websites that actually come up top in Google? Well, I mean, coming up on top on Google is huge because everybody's using their phones these days to ask where they should go. So for that to just pop up up top is, you know, you can't put a number on that for what it does for your your, your income and the people 
look and search your website. I mean, Dave uh, was writing blogs and stuff that helps with the SEO and coming up high on that. And uh, we got a catering just from her reading one of the blogs. I mean, how do you put it? A- yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just been that, that part of it's been a big eye opener for me because I just didn't put that much weight on it until we start. I, I kind of, we always kind of start with a, we'll try anything until it doesn't work. So we went in with that with, you know, this full blast. And it just blew my mind how well that worked. Now, tracking results is a big thing. And I love working with you guys because um, you're, you're diligent people that show up to work every day. And I don't care how good of a boss you are in the restaurant business. I really I really don't. No matter how great of a boss you are, you're going to have turnover in the restaurant business because young people who are waiters and waitresses, they decide to move, they get pregnant, they get another job. There's a lot of variables. And so you're never stopping recruiting. Um, Dave, I, I can't tell you how many restaurants I've worked with over the years. And I tell them, listen, recruiting is, is a never ending process as a restaurant owner. It's like a garden. You have to pull the weeds every week. Can you talk to the listeners out there about the importance of you never stopping recruiting? Because again, I could give you all the advice in the world, but if you wouldn't, if you would not have implemented it, it wouldn't help. Can you talk to the listeners out there about the importance of never stopping recruiting? Well, it's just from week to week, like you said, you never know. One day you don't have enough shifts, and then the next day you come in and four people disappear in the night. You don't even know what happened to them. And by having people lined up to come right in, it smooths over the transition. And it's it's this never-ending process. And it seems like lately the new the new younger groups that come in, the new, younger kids, they just change jobs every four or five months just because. You know, when I grew up, you got in the job, you liked it, you stayed. But it's not that way anymore. People change just for the sake of changing. So keeping the recruiting going, keep staff. Now, this is a big thing. The experience itself is a wow. And I know we worked with you guys on making sure we had an intentional um, wow moment in terms of the decor, the atmosphere, the music, everything. And again, you guys have great food. But I'd love to get Trisha's thoughts on this. When people go to Morning Glory for the first time or they walk into Papa Gallo's, and I've had friends of mine, the Johnsons, Jared and Jennifer Johnson, actually came to your restaurant, and their comment was, wow, that's awesome. Can you talk about the importance of being intentional to make an experience that wows there, Tricia? Well, I mean, that's the people look with their eyes first, so they don't even see the food yet. So if they're looking at your you know, seating or, or your walls or and they don't get that kind of wow from it, they're not going to get the wow from the food either because that comes later. So it's very important, especially ladies with bathrooms and stuff is huge. You know, if you've got a, a really poorly put together bathroom and the ladies got to go in there and they just don't like it, they're not coming back. Even if your food is amazing, if your bathroom isn't there, it's just a game changer for them. Now, checklists and processes. Um, you guys have done a great job making checklists for everything. I'm going to pull up these websites here. Again, if you're in Florida, it's worth the drive. Papagallos.com, morningglorieatery.com. It's worth the drive. You got to check it out there, folks. Checklists and processes for everything. Um, Dave, um, you got to make a menu. You got to have recipes. You got to have checklists. You know, you, you can go out there and make a great menu, but you have to deliver on it. And you guys do such a great job of that. You have a menu but you got to deliver on it. So you've got the recipes and the checklist. Can you talk to the listeners out there about the importance of taking the time over these past six years and even before that of building checklists for everything? Well, it's just, especially with in the kitchen area, the cooks, even though you tell them certain things, if it's not written down and make them measure, everybody wants to put a little more of this or a little more of that. And then that messes with your consistency. So having that recipe and, being able to see somebody putting something together like the dough recipe and see them measure now how much goes into it versus just eyeballing it is a big deal. And if there's a checklist and you can just see, okay, it's out or it's not. And I'm constantly in the kitchen saying, are you measuring and use a checklist? Cause they don't, you know, everybody wants to put their little spin on stuff and you just can't have that. Now, one thing I really enjoy uh, about working with you, Tricia uh, and Dave is you're really, really wonderful people. And uh, you guys aren't um, petty people. You're not, uh, but petty means smoke, focusing on small things. Um, you're not ignoramuses. You're not jerks. Um, you're kind to people. And so it's fun to help amplify your business and to see it grow. Um, but growing a business, again, is like pull, is like growing a, a garden. You know, you have to pull weeds every week. And so every week I hop on the phone call with you at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, three times a week, or the website will go down or you know, there's a pricing increase or something will change. 
or when the, the, the COVID lockdowns happened, it was getting PPP funding, and there's just so many of these urgent things. Uh, let me get your thoughts, Tricia, on what it's like to have um, our team um, available to help you in your times of need on a weekly basis. As you know, Because a lot of people view growing a business as an event where really it's a weekly process. Can you talk to the listeners out there about the, the value of having a, a weekly support team that you can trust? Yeah, I mean, like with our menu and stuff, especially after COVID, you never know when we're going to have to change something because uh, we can't get a product anymore. Or um, like exactly today, we just found out that one of our wines is discontinued and no longer available. So that's just going to put a, you know, a new change on the menu or onto the website as well. Um, the website's gone down and all of a sudden we get a notice from a customer that it's down. And, and now we even have like the beach cam on it, which is huge, which you guys helped us with. So that's got to be up and running, you know, 24 seven as well. Um, I think with COVID, when we were going through COVID, um, you, you were ahead of the game as far as everybody else. Like we still are getting stuff for ERC credits, you know, which we have already done thanks to you guys being able to tell us, you know, hey, you need to look into this. So I think your help in all those areas, you know, like you said, on a weekly basis is, is kept us ahead of every little thing that's come our way, especially through COVID. Now, Dave, I have a printer guy that I probably haven't talked enough about my printer guy, but I have a guy, if you're listening and you're in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, I will give you my printer guy's number, bud. But uh, I have printers everywhere in my office, printers, uh, flat screen TVs, and I've worked with the guy, I think, for 10 years. And every time a printer goes out or a TV goes out, I call him, he comes by and fixes it. And I can't tell you how rare that is to have a vendor that I actually am not fighting with every every week, every month. I mean, this guy is on it. Um, can you talk, Dave, about that? Because we work together every week, and the relationship that you and I have, I think, is very um, responsive. Where if you have something, we knock it out, and it's sort of that that win win relationship. Can you talk, Dave, about the importance of having a a team that you can trust to work with you? Because I think there's a lot of squirrely vendors out there. Well, the biggest help with that is it's like we get an objective opinion on something like, you know, you kind of know what you want to do on any given circumstances. But being able to pick up the phone and have access to your experience and your expertise and say, yeah, that's a good idea or no, stay away from that, because this is why you don't want to do it. And it's objective. So it's not somebody who's actually got a vested interest in what's going on, but we get an opinion really quick. And a lot of times we agree with it and it just reaffirms that this is something you should do or shouldn't. Now, Trisha, one of the things I did when I was growing my first company, djconnection.com, is I um, I, I had a, a company I hired for graphic design. And somehow, no matter what we talked about, it was always $4,000. And then I had a web guy. And every time I'd call my web guy, I don't know how, but it was always $400. Every time I talked to him, $400. 4,000 graphic design, video guy. I don't know why it was, but it was always $3,000. And then they would never talk to each other. So my video guy, my web guy, my graphic design, and there was all these vendors and I could never get any of them to communicate. And I always had these massive bills. How helpful is it for you doing the budgeting? I know you work together doing this, but how helpful is it for you knowing that it's going to be a flat rate every month? That's what it's going to cost. Well, I think we've had those conversations before, you know, with like the web and the printing, which we do a lot for at the restaurant, stuff like that. Just have one person, one place, have all of our information already, one stop shop, you know, instant response. We're constantly, I think since COVID, we've been talking about this a lot lately. Nobody really does their job anymore and follows up on what they're supposed to do. So we turn into being babysitters and hmm. making sure that people do their job. But we don't have that with everything that you guys do for us. We just know that we reach out to you whenever it needs to be done. Don't even worry about price. It's already, you know, set in place and, and make it happening and actually get it done and not have to babysit you. Now, uh, huge. Final, I mean, I don't spend on that. My final two questions I have for you is why should anybody out there who's in the satellite beach area, why should they come by Papa Gallows and uh, a morning glory? Why should they do it, Dave? Why should everybody come by at least once? I would argue people might want to plan a vacation just around the idea of coming to morning glory and, and, and uh, uh, Papa Gallows. Why should people check it out? I think the biggest thing is we're local. We've been, Papa Gallows has been around for 33 years, morning glory going on four. So we're part of the community. If you want to get a, an idea of what the community is like, some of the kids have grown up in our place working. So it's just a local place. It's a local taste of, you know, Florida, really. Beach is right out back. You can look at the ocean and have a drink or have a pizza or, or eggs Benedict and look at the ocean. It's just a nice Florida experience. And a lot of the comments we get with our staff is, 
you know, a lot of the people go to restaurants and such, but when they come to our restaurant, the staff is always happy and Very are there friendly. to, yes, friendly and are there to serve you, not just, oh, you're another customer, you're another table, you know, kind of do a shoddy little job and move on. You know, they really do care. And I think that comes from Dave, you know, caring about the food as much. It's gone on to the staff as well. And it shows through the customer's responses. And I'm not asking for the number on the show. I'm not asking for a specific number, but um, since we started working with you, I believe Papa Gallo's is four times larger. And I believe Morning Glory is about the same size as Papa Gallo's. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. And, and like I said, sometimes it's, it's, it just drives me crazy because it took 33 years to get Papa oh. Gallo's to that level. And Morning Glory sometimes beats it and it just drives me bananas. But it's, I mean, it's, like I said, when we started with Morning Glory, we started with both feet in the right place and knew where we were going, where we spent a lot of years at Papa Gallo's trying to figure stuff out. And having you in our corner to just bounce ideas off of is, is a huge comfort and help. Well, Dave, I really do appreciate you guys. And I will listen my final question for you there, Tricia. For people out there that are thinking about uh, coming to one of our workshops or thinking about um, hiring us for consulting, we only take on 160 clients. So I don't want to waste anybody's time out there who wouldn't be a good fit. And, uh, you know, I want to respect everybody's time. But who would be a good fit in your mind for, for what we do? I mean, pretty much anybody. I mean, you're not you're not a niche one type of like a restaurant type of person to go to. You do you do with all the businesses. So anybody that has a business that wants to grow their business or even, you know, make it better and set up the systems and stuff like that. Definitely don't even hesitate. Just give them a call. Well, I appreciate you guys. Thank, thank you so much for carving out time. And folks, if you're watching today, I want to encourage you. We've had the craziest last, what, four years, three years possible. It's never been more difficult to hire people. And Dave and Trisha have done it. They're very normal people. They're not holograms, but they're very abnormally diligent. And so if you're out there today and you're a diligent person, I want to encourage you that you too can have massive success. Thank you guys for carving out time and we'll talk to you soon, okay? The number of new customers that we've had is up. 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We it was a system that we that we followed with Thrive in in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the four hundred eleven percent shows that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was ninety one percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months. Or I'm sorry, the first we we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. So. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, 
come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists that when everything um, gets done and it gets done right, uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like I said, the diligence and um, consistency and doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business. Um, and we, we were in a rut and we didn't know... Oh, sorry. The last three years, our customer base had pretty much stayed the same. We weren't shrinking, but we weren't really growing either. Yeah, and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go, what to do, how to get out of this rut that we're in. Um, but Thrive helped us with that. You know, they, they implemented those systems. That they taught us those systems. They taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed. Now it's been a grind. Absolutely, it's been a grind this last year. Um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into it. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense. Starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day-to-day -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies he's at the top he has a team of uh, business coaches videographers gra and graphic designers and web developers and they run 160 companies every single week so think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies so in the weekly he's running 160 companies um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13 step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like 
Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and uh, that's what I like him most about him. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Uh, anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or, uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing, and this is our new team. We went from four to 14, and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past, and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman, so we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts, and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now, it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. Whoa. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Robert Zellner and Associates, look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses? 
or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever, and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you, and we're excited to see you. And now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you.